Uh, my name is Matt Likens, uh, President and CEO of Altera Incorporated. Uh, before that, I was with Johnson & Johnson, Baxter International, uh, one failed startup where I learned everything not to do <laughs> in a startup environment, very valuable, uh, moving out to Arizona and beginning Altera. I was the second employee at Altera in July of 2006. Uh, I have to uh, give tribute to my Altera colleagues here at Table 3 for driving us up to over 200 employees. <laughs> and $150 million in revenue after launching our um, ultrasound technology outside the U.S. first in Europe uh, and parts of Asia in late 2008 uh, and then FDA clearance came relatively late in late 2009 and launching in the U.S. in early 2010. Um, our product is sold to dermatologists and plastic surgeons. We have now about 4,000 systems around the world and you treat the, these physicians treat patients, creating firming, tightening, and lifting of skin tissue in a non-invasive one-hour procedure. And it works, and it works just about every time, which is unusual in the field of aesthetics. So that really has differentiated us. Um, we have seven operating principles, and over the last couple of years, we decided we needed a purpose. So we have a lifting indication from the FDA for the brow. We have a lift of the lower face and neck. Uh, and we also decided our purpose should be lifting lives. So we try to uh, improve the lives of, of our customers uh, and even the lives of those less fortunate in the local community. So that's, a, that's our story. We're sticking to it, right, guys? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So Matt, I'm going to um, stay with you for this next question, and then we'll go uh, work with the panel. Um, you know, there was something that you left out in those comments. Um, you know, when we talk about the road from discovery to development to delivery, and you did that whole thing with with Altera, um, investors also want to know about an exit. And the Altera exit was last year for $600 million as you were acquired by MERS. Um, that doesn't happen very often here in Arizona. What was it like going through that journey as an Arizona company? Yes, yeah, so um, when, we, uh, when we began uh, in late 06, we were in Arizona because the founder of the company, Dr. Michael Slayton, who actually grew up in Moscow in the Soviet Union at the time, uh, received his PhD in acoustics engineering from Kiev State University in the Ukraine, and he and his wife migrated to the U.S. in the late 70s, pretty unusual at the time. And uh, he had developed uh, an ultrasound consulting firm, Guided Therapy Systems, located at Sycamore and Main Street uh, in, in the city of Mesa. And so that's why we started the company here. That's where Michael was, and that's where his engineering team was. Uh, he had already raised a round of financing, about six million, and we ended up raising two subsequent rounds, a total of $40 million in VC financing from uh, Apposite Capital and 3i Corporation out of London. Uh, and then uh, NEA ended up being our largest investor out of the Silicon Valley. Um, so, so that's why, and, and NEA, as soon as they invested in late 07, decided they wanted us to move to the Silicon Valley so they could keep a closer look on us, uh, a closer overview of the company. So we ran the numbers. Um, they were major investors, so we wanted to be sensitive to their needs and found it was one-tenth the operating cost of remaining in Arizona versus, versus moving there. So we, we won that battle. We stayed in Arizona and were able uh, to thrive. But we had two big, hairy, audacious goals as we started the company. One was to have 100% treatment efficacy. And the second goal was to create $1 billion of enterprise value. And, and so everybody thought we were crazy. Nothing works 100% of the time on all patients. And in fact, we don't. But if that's not your goal, then why are you in business? So we had to at least strive for that. Uh, and, w and we failed to reach a billion dollars uh, in value. We only reached 600 million dollars in value. So I guess, I guess we failed on both of those. But the other part of that is every Ulthera employee that we brought on board had ownership in the company. And that proved to be a very uh, strong incentive 
to treat the company's business as your own business. And, and because it truly was all of our business with the various levels of ownership that we had. And, and I think that really galvanized a, a strong focus on meeting the company's goals and the customer requirements around the world. So, so thank you for that. I, I have to cite the city of Mesa was very accommodating uh, as we moved to our current location, which was about three and a half years ago now, we needed some zoning changes in order to do light manufacturing and assembly there. Uh, and they treated us as an important customer, even though we had 40 employees at the time. Uh, and we're a small business generating uh, in that year about 25 million in revenue. Uh, but but they responded very quickly. We got the zoning through, we moved into the facility, and, and again, grew to over 200 employees and 150 million in revenue. And a lot of it, we stayed here because of that responsiveness. We felt really wanted and desired here. So that, that went a long way toward us remaining here and thriving. And now I think that this panel, I mean, uh, very interested in figuring out what more Arizona can do to be a more attractive place for other companies like ours. Okay. Uh and Ray, you have one of the largest concentrations of researchers that are developing these new technologies that will become these new companies. What's their road like? Uh, but there's a lot of discovery. We have uh, great universities, low tuition. We're producing a lot of workforce at ASU and University of Arizona, NAU. So I think that that is all good and will help provide a, a good environment. Terrific. Um, I, I, um, I, to I totally agree. And on the, on the VC front, by the way, th I think there are a couple of ways to skin that cat. One is to keep on working on bringing uh, VC funds that will be based here, but also it's a role for all of us to try as ambassadors to, to bring, uh, uh, to make aware of uh, uh, opportunities in Arizona for those VCs that are based in Texas, that are based in California mostly. Uh, and uh, I think there's starting to be a certain awareness among those groups uh, in, in specific fields. Uh, bioengineering is certainly uh, one of them, uh, diagnostics, uh, and, and there are quite a few in, in healthcare and obviously also in the software industry, not, not to mention that one. So I'm, I'm, um, uh, I think we should think a bit outside of the box in terms of uh, not being totally uh, focused only on the fact that you know it's very tough to get people based here. Yeah, so I, I do think the climate is clearly an advantage, having grown up in northeastern Ohio and lived in Chicago for a number of years, and uh, my wife's from upstate New York, uh, so um, we, we had, were able to hire half of our senior management team locally, folks who were already in Arizona and very talented professionals, and it was really very easy to recruit the other half of the team from various parts of the country um, who were excited about relocating to Arizona. Uh, I mentioned cost before, and in a startup environment, every dollar is critical. And I think Arizona has a very effective cost structure. And whether it's housing costs, uh, clearly right after uh, Nancy and I bought our home in, in late 2006, uh, we found that it was worth you know, much less, uh, but which was very attractive for the people we were recruiting to Arizona. Not, not so attractive for us, but... You know, it's called retention. Yeah, yeah you, you win some, you lose some, right? Uh, but also the tax structure, 4.5% uh, state income tax versus mm -hmm. California's 13.5%, mm -hmm. for instance. I think they're just to the west of us, aren't they? Yeah. Cali you spend a lot of time there. Yes. But your residence is here. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for a reason. Uh, and also, I'm encouraged by the fact that I think the, the state government, um, and again, not, not to be political at all, but to have a business person in the top job now uh, who started a company and, and grew it, I think there's more sensitivity and, and a chance for us to align a number of additional factors uh, so that we can be a more attractive place to start new companies and to attract existing companies. Um, ju just to provide some color on, on the cost dimension, uh, I just got from the San Diego U Union Tribune some statistics that you'll find interesting, ranking the different cities in the western part of the United States. I won't mention the cost in San Francisco, everybody knows that. But um, for instance, the office cost per employee is $3,900 in Phoenix. 
it's the next lowest is five thousand dollars in Orange County, and it goes up, you know, to Austin at fifty-seven hundred, etc. So I won't quote you all though, those, but there is a huge differential between Phoenix and the next cheapest alternatives. You take the average salary uh, in that tech study, ninety-one thousand for Phoenix, and it's uh, half of San Francisco, uh, but it's also lower than Denver, and it's everybody else is over a hundred thousand. So, uh, in terms of labor costs, in terms of cost, uh, cost of living, the average apartment rent in Phoenix, 841, I'm not sure where they live. And, uh, the, the <laughs> not in the, your neighborhood. Yeah, well, so maybe it's an older study. And, um, and the others are all over 13, 1400, and obviously uh, uh, San Francisco at 3000. So, just to throw a few numbers here to show this huge gap, a positive gap there is between uh, Phoenix and, and uh, competing uh, cities. Okay. And, you know, it, it's interesting as we have these conversations and um, it, many of us will be heading in January to J.P. Morgan to have the conversations with the investor community and the institutionals and everyone else. But, you know, as we have those conversations, as we make that journey, um, it's an opportunity for all of us to be ambassadors for Arizona. And um, one of the things that AZ Bio is working on right now, and there was actually an email that went out earlier this week. So we are actually recruiting right now. I want to know the name, the phone number, cell phone number, email address, and what you're, where you're going and who you're talking with at JP Morgan. So what I can have is a master file. And um, for those of you that have one sheets, I'll have a master one sheet book that I will have with me for all of my meetings. And we are also um, hosting at JP Morgan, along with um, some of our fellow state biotech associations, a big party on Sunday night, and you are all invited. And it's free. I, this one you had to pay for, that one's free. And in addition to that, um, we will also have meeting space at JP Morgan, which can be a real problem when you're trying to find a table at a coffee shop. Um, so that our companies have that opportunity. So when we think about the things that we just heard on how Arizona has advantages, okay, that's the message that every single one of us can carry in San Francisco. But, you know, everything's not perfect here. So what are some of the things, and, and I'm going to uh, start with JP, um, what are some things that we need to work on? We started to talk a bit about uh, uh, the availability of uh, capital. Uh, that's, that would be the first one to come to mind. And uh, I talked a bit earlier in a previous response on how we could try to reach out to VCs from other parts of the world, so I, w I, won't, uh, I won't repeat that. Uh, there, there is another one, and this one is not addressed to you, but it's how can we, when there is a successful liquidity event, trying to make sure that you know, we, we uh, encourage entrepreneurs to reinvest locally. Because there, there is a lot of value that is being created, no, not necessarily in the scale that is being uh, created uh, with my colleague, uh, Matt, but uh, th there is a positive, there, there could be a positive momentum in terms of reinvesting in, uh, mm -hmm. in the community, going from one success to, to another one here in Arizona. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's certainly one, one idea. Um, and um, then on, in terms of uh, uh, trying to uh, be not only the ambassador at uh, JP Morgan, but try, trying more broadly when we are in Europe, when we are in uh, other parts of the world, when we are in, in, in other parts of the US, uh, making sure that people are aware about the efforts that start with uh, research, with the, the TGENs of this world, with the, the bio design, uh, because the, I'm not sure it has been fully publicized. So, you know, giving, uh, as we say in French, rendering to Caesar what belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Rendre à César ce qui lui appartient. Excuse my French. Matt. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, I, I think one dire need is we are, like it or not, we're in a global economy. And we do not serve the globe from a transportation standpoint. So Phoenix Sky Harbor is a wonderful airport. It's a domestic airport for the, for the most part. And so we started our company commercial process in Europe and Asia, as I mentioned, and you can't get there. I mean, you can get to London. You know, one flight a day, right, eight o'clock at night, British Airways to London. You can't get to continental Europe without stopping somewhere else. 
Uh, you can't get to Asia without stopping on the West Coast. Um, and, and so I think Phoenix could be a gateway to Latin America overall, but something needs to be done to have much better transportation options. That, that's where the world starts. Regulatory hurdles are less onerous outside the U.S. To get some of these exciting, cutting-edge technologies out into the marketplace in the real world, you've got to get out there and do it. And mo many times, doing your clinical studies will be much more economical outside the U.S. as well. So for Phoenix to compete with San Francisco and even the Twin Cities and Boston and these other hubs for life sciences development, uh, that, that's a big need. I think more and better use of the economic development tools. So we were fortunate enough to get a grant from the Arizona Commerce Authority mm -hmm. because of our growth plans. And s when we hit those growth milestones, you know, we ended up with uh, roughly $500,000 of investment that it was an incentive for us to stay here. And that was invested back into hiring more employees, developing additional products, building our revenue. And, and since the acquisition, just to, to make it clear, we're growing the organization. Mertz values Ulthera in Mesa as a, their uh, medical device innovation center around the world. We're the only medical device uh, company that they have, and we will remain here and continue to grow. But that investment that ACA made in us was another reason why we were able to grow successfully here. I also think that we have to invest more in education. And Senator Worsley and I were discussing that, and I'm glad you, you recognized his support of that. And there are various ways that it can be done. And it's really critical as you're growing a company to have access to more young employees who are trained in the right way and have the right background in education. And there's a lot of work to be done there as well. Great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, right. And I had one other thing, Joan. You know, uh, having my roots in Texas and coming here from Houston, um, I'm still on this uh, review committee for this um, enterprise development fund in Texas. The state has put a, aside a lot of money to try to attract and develop companies to the state of Texas. So I just came back from a meeting in Dallas that we had two weeks ago, and essentially we doled out about 30 or 40 million dollars in that one meeting. Uh, one was to bring a company from Sweden, from uh, Karolinska to Austin, uh, and another was to develop a company in Houston that was pretty far along. And the state is providing this uh, incentive through funds that uh, come through the state of Texas. And it's really had a huge impact there. There have been, uh, the, they gave us statistics at the beginning of the meeting. They've attracted over the last five years 30 or 40 companies to Dallas, Houston, and, and Austin. So that does work. And, and obviously, you got support from Arizona to get started. Uh, they're doing it in a much bigger way, but any amount of that is going to help, especially at these earlier stages when it's uh, time to, you know, get things moving past that stage. Absolutely, and I think, you know, as we look at wish lists, the gentlemen on stage have been extremely succinct. Um, I'm very greedy, so my wish list is longer. And I see Representative Fan has the program. Representative Fan, would you just hold that up? Okay, in your program, you will find my Christmas list. Here's the thing. There have been times when Arizona has been incredibly forward-thinking. And um, the packages that we put together over the last five to ten years um, really made us competitive nationally with the angel investor tax credit, with the R&D tax credit, with some of the other programs that we have. Now I'm gonna give you the ugly truth. Everybody else is caught up. Okay. Those are not competitive advantages anymore. Those are the tickets to the dance. And so if we don't have dollars in the investor tax credit fund, or which obviously that requires a new appropriation. If we um, are in a situation where our R&D tax credits run out before the companies can all get their applications in, um, those are the things that go against retaining and growing companies here. Hey John, may, may I just Absolutely. one thing on this? 
uh, I just uh, for this panel I, I just gathered some mm -hmm. input and um, I, I was surprised but I mean, somewhat surprised to hear that some angel groups had lost members because of the tax credit question uh, here and uh, obviously there, there were two had lost uh, two major angel groups had lost some were able to one was able to kind of compensate with new members but the other not so this this is the real world mm -hmm. it is and so you know when Ray mentioned the um, funds that are in Texas okay. so let's look at our neighbors for a minute Texas has a major investment fund for key new knowledge economy um, investments. Colorado has a fund to invest. These are state dollars that are normally matching in that private investment dollars. The private investors are doing the due diligence and the state gets to benefit from that. Utah has a private investment fund. California has invested in specific technologies and because of it, their life science industry is flourishing. So if we want to now take the main dance floor again, we have to think about different ways of doing it. And we need to do it in a way that it's good for all Arizonans. Because one of the things that's really important is as these new life-changing, life-saving innovations are being brought to light, people benefit. Now, Sometimes the benefits are cosmetic. Okay. I got to be in one of Matt's clinical trials, and, and it really does work. Um, but at the same time, when we're talking about other kinds of clinical trials, Celgene developed Abraxas, or Abraxane. The clinical trials for Abraxane in multiple cancers, but primarily um, have happened here. It's thanks to the work at TGen and Dr. Von Hoff and the people at Honor Health that we are adding life, time, the most precious commodity to, for people that have pancreatic cancer, which is the ugliest cancer. So when we look at these investments that we make in these companies, these investments that we make in our universities, these investments that we make in institutions like TGen, yes, we benefit the world. Yes, we want to create a vibrant economy. But at the end of the day, yes, we are creating life-saving opportunities for people who live in Arizona and other people that will travel to Arizona to come here for that opportunity. And so the economic impacts are huge. The social impacts for the people of Arizona are, as they say in the MasterCard commercials, they're priceless. So, okay, I'm going back to the panel now. End of my commercial. Make sure you read your program. My wish list is in there. Okay, so, you know, we talked a little bit about um, you know, what the advantages are, what some of the things we are, we need to work on are. Um, but investors look at more than just a company. Okay? A company is a legal entity. It doesn't predict success. Um, they look at community. They look for an ecosystem. Um, what are some of the things that we need to focus on to ensure that the companies that are born in Arizona stay in Arizona? And I'm going to ask Matt, you to, since you started that as part of your early discussion, to give me a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so once a company is acquired, of course, you have no control. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think Valiant's acquisition of Metasys now, Good you know, example. two years ago or more was an example of uh, maybe the, the worst effect that can happen with uh, 400 jobs being affected and 30 jobs being retained and all of those moving to the wonderful garden state of New Jersey, right? And so I think the Mertz acquisition of Altera is certainly not the same scale at all, but that's, that's a great thing to happen here because we get to retain our center of excellence here, grow the organization. We're launching a new technology that uh, improves the appearance of cellulite and trust me, nothing works to treat cellulite. <laughs> Selfina does. Selfina is 
uh, literally fina, I believe that's end yes. in Latin, maybe even in French, but uh, the, the end of the appearance of cellulite as well. And so that's really exciting and that's something that we, we acquired the technology, finished the development of it and we'll launch that. And there are many others in the works now. What, what I found uh, is successful in other states, you mentioned Colorado and I've had uh, the chance to go there several times during this year. They have tremendous alignment of the governor, Hickenlooper, who's a Democrat, the two U.S. Uh, senators, one Republican, one Democrat, uh, the, the mayors in the front range of Colorado, all very much pro-business. And they also have a strategic partnership with Blackstone, uh, the huge private equity firm, I think $600 billion under management. And, and they have 300 startup companies over the last five years up and down the front range. And I think it's that alignment. And I think Arizona is more splintered that way uh, with lots of different groups well-meaning, but I don't think we're getting the power out of all the efforts that are going in right now. I think there's a lot of opportunity to bring that together and have a comprehensive approach so that companies that are developed here there's a lot of reason for management teams to sell and stay here for the next opportunity because of what's coming out of biodesign and what's coming out of TGen and there are a lot of other opportunities. There aren't that many now and it makes it tougher to, to uh, relocate folks who are there. Well, if this doesn't work and nine and a half out of 10 startups don't work financially, then what am I going to do next? And, and so I, I think we can get that alignment. It'll go a long way toward growing and sustaining in existing enterprises. Okay. JP? Uh, let, let me, I, I totally agree with uh, what Matt said. Let me add uh, uh, one element of the ecosystem where perhaps uh, we need to focus on, that's the retention of talent. That is, if you have a talent pool of young engineers, young scientists that is available here, and we can convince them upon graduation, we first have to educate them well, no question, but then uh, making sure that they feel there is a critical mass of opportunities here in the valley. Um, otherwise, we'll get the, the bright PhDs and M, uh, MS, MBAs, whatever, to, to go to California, go to Texas. So I think it's, uh, it really behooves us to, to try to uh, convince uh, 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 and mentor the, the younger members of the crowd that there are opportunities, that this is a booming, don't take the snapshot of 05, you know, when 15 things are really moving. So I think it's a very important part of the ecosystem because otherwise companies may be tempted to move if they don't get the local talent. And Ray, um, you're expanding your research capacity right now. Yeah, we're, we're really blessed. We're going to be starting, uh, open a, op starting up building a new building, uh, real uh, break ground, I guess is the word, uh, after the first of the year. So uh, that'll add another group. We just recently added a, and, and actually collaboration is the key here because uh, you know, we're in a place where we're not, don't have overabundant uh, research base. So collaboration is very important. And we've struck a collaboration uh, with uh, uh, Eric Ryman at Banner Health to start a neuroscience neurodegenerative disease center. And, and those folks are gonna be uh, occupying some of that new building space. Uh, we're creating a new a group on microbiome science. It's an area that is involved in a lot of different diseases, uh, not only of the gut, but also skin and other things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're growing. Uh, our leader is very aggressive about that. Uh, and uh, we have set goals to uh, achieve a certain amount of extramural research funding by 2020. And so everybody's working hard uh, to hit those targets. And, you know, I think uh, th there's a good chance for success there. Okay. So now we're going to go, because I promised everybody 1 o'clock and we're coming up on the hour. So, uh, Matt, I'm going to start with you. Give me a one-liner. How can we make, Arizona, make life better in Arizona? Well, for, uh, so this is my last chance to say something. I think we should recognize the, the tireless work that Joan does on behalf of the state and not only AZ Bio, but a tremendous. <laughs> yeah, so t t to make it better, I, I think that uh, it takes a comprehensive approach with the right type of alignment. I think uh, all of the incentives are there to do it. 
Uh, I also think that, and it's been mentioned a couple of times, but each of us, as we're traveling around, need to dispel some of the myths associated with Arizona. We live here. We know that you know, they are myths. 99% of them are myths. And, and I think we can be advocates, we can be champions, and we can change the perception just by all of us being positive about the things, you know, it's true. We love living here, there are good reasons for it. And if we don't start it, it'll be a long time before that perception changes. So I, I think that's really important. JP? Um, Matt took the holistic approach, I'll, talk, I'll, took, I'll take the in the conflicts approach. Um, I, I would say if it, it really is important for all of us to try either to mentor a, a, a young company, to mentor young uh, grads, uh, trying to, uh, to encourage them. So I think there is a chance here to have a direct impact with the, the collective and individual in, uh, experience of this in, in this room. I mean, if I had to say one word, I would, it would be collaboration and enhanced collaboration, and not just among the scientists, but I think among the investor community, the legislature, the community leaders, uh, chamber of commerce, and really enhance that collaborative component because uh, that will help us accelerate and get to a point uh, where we can compete better with some of these outside forces. I think, you know, there's an old African proverb, and it goes like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go farther, travel together. And you know what we've heard today relative to alignment, relative to investment, relative to opportunity, are all things that we've heard over and over again. It comes back to working together. And you know, there will be, as we go through our theme of making life better in the next year, we're going to talk about a lot of things that you wouldn't expect us to talk about. Um, because yes, we make medical devices, and we make drugs, and we do research, but those are tools. We're in the business of time because time is precious. It's those tools that will allow us to extend the life of a loved one. It's those tools that will allow us to um, have a quality, as, as my hair gets grayer and my years get longer, um, you know, have a quality of life well into our, our later years. And that's what we're working on. That's what will make life better for the people of Arizona. That's what we're investing in at the state level. That's what we're investing in as companies. That's what we're investing in as investors. And that's what we're investing in each other. So um, with that, I would like you to give a big round of applause for our panelists because they rocked it. And again, um, a huge thank you to our elected leaders that are with us here today. Um, we, we truly do appreciate you. A big thank you to our AZ Bio board members. We can't do it without you. Thank you to our sponsors. You are the fuel that is push, pushing us forward faster. And together, we are going to make Arizona a top tier bioscience state. And the people in this room are going to make it happen. Have an absolutely fabulous holiday season, and we'll see you in January. Thank you.